Chapter 10 Flora felt a quick arrow of sadness stab her. This was no run in the cornfield. Mother! Alfred! Would she ever see her family again? If she had a howl in her, this would be the time to let it out. All she could do was squeal. The air inside the truck was warm. It was filled with the smell of dog and gasoline, and the sound of barking was now deafening. The truck growled deeply and moved with a lurch. Flora was thrown against the metal grid of her cage. Judging from the yelps around her, so were her traveling companions. The barking stopped. Flora picked herself up as the truck crunched along the gravel road. It vibrated and shook and went over heavy bumps now and then, which made it hard for Flora to keep her footing. She kept knocking her head. Then after a bone-cracking heave that lifted every cage into the air and slammed them back down, the ride smoothed out. Flora was definitely scared, but she had picked her moment, and she had shown spirit and courage. Luna would be so proud. Luna! Flora didn't even get to say goodbye. Flora looked around her cage. A dirty, crumbled blanket lay on the floor, and two metal pans were upturned. There might have been water in one of them until the big heave. Now there was just a wet spot on a corner of the blanket. Beside the other bowl were two carrots and half an apple. If only Alfred were here with her. No, it was a good thing her little brother was safe in the pen. Of course, Luna would be just fine. She was happiest telling stories, except now she would have to find someone else to listen to them. Daylight flashed in through the corners of the canvas sides. In the flashes, she caught glimpses of the dogs. She watched as some of them circled inside their cages before lying down. They were perhaps 10 or 15 altogether, and they didn't seem afraid or worried. Oscar, she said. It was the only name she knew. Is Oscar here? She said louder, though she doubted anyone could hear her over the truck's roar. There was no answer. Whether these dogs were from the farm or not, Flora was sure she was the only pig. Judging by how hard the men had worked to catch her or one of her brothers, there must be a need for a strong and fast pig on this adventure. No pig on the farm was stronger or faster than she was. The drone of the wheels made Flora sleepy. She circled on the blanket as she had seen the dogs do and then flopped down. Boom! Flora's eyes opened. Crash! Flunk! She scrambled to her feet. The truck had stopped moving. Men were shouting to one another. The flap at the back of the truck suddenly opened and the light poured in. Two men reached into Flora's cage, lifted her out, and placed her on solid ground. She rocked a bit, getting used to the feel of a steady surface again. Hands fumbled around her neck, buckling up a leather collar and then chaining it to a short post. The dogs were lifted from the truck one by one, still in their inside cages. Then the truck roared away louder than ever. At first, Flora had trouble opening her eyes. The world was too bright, but by squinting, she slowly got used to it. The dock was busier than a pig pen full of piglets and noisier than a truck full of dogs. Men in heavy boots stomped here and there. They carried, rolled, and pushed boxes and barrels from one pile to another. A ship with a thundering engine pulled alongside the dock. Waves sloshed as the men tied the ship down as if it were a living thing that might escape. On top of the post sat a white bird staring at her. Hello, said Flora. The bird squawked and flew off. Flora turned her head. In one direction were the piles of boxes and crates and cages. She couldn't see inside any of them. In another direction, there was nothing but blue, sparkling water. This had to be the ocean, Luna described. Who would have thought 
Flora would someday be here, listening to the waves and actually seeing them, and the smells. Luna hadn't told her about the fish smell or the smell of oily, dark wood that she was standing on, plus there was the smell of garbage and, of course, the salty sea. A manure pile smelled fresh and clean compared to this, but Flora liked it. To her, it was the smell of adventure. Slide out the gangplank, a sailor bellowed. A great board banged down from the ship onto the dock, and soon men were filling up at carrying barrels and boxes. Crash! Flora jumped. A large wooden box had been slammed to the ground behind her, almost crushing her tail. But the men didn't seem to notice or care. Only the ringing of a big bell finally made them stop and look around. They seemed to relax and breathe easier, and they addressed one another for the first time that day. Lunch boxes appeared in strong hands, and the men sat in small groups. They tore at their sandwiches as Flora watched. This was better. Now Flora could think, maybe even talk to someone. She took a dainty step. Her chain was just long enough that she could see into the first cage. The eyes that looked back were soft blue with black in the middle. Flora blinked. It was Oscar from the farm. She didn't remember him being so large, nor that he had strictly black and white fur. He blinked back when he saw her. Flora cleared her throat. <clears throat> Good morning. It's nice to see you again. You're Oscar, right? My name is Flora. The dog blinked again. That's right. I'm Oscar. Good morning. Oscar had a deep, smooth voice. Flora hoped he would feel like talking. Do you know what happens next? Flora, Oscar looked over, looked Flora over. It wasn't an unfriendly looking over, but slow and thoughtful, as if he weren't sure he'd be talking to a pig. Yep, he finally said. We get on a ship and sail away. That ship? asked Flora. That's it. Oscar flipped his nose toward the ship tied to the dock. The Explorer. The Explorer? A thrill went from Flora's shoulders down to her hooves. That sounds very exciting. And what is it we'll be exploring? Oscar sat up. We are going to be the first expedition ever to cross the Antarctic. I've already been there. To get ready for the journey, I went with a team months ago to make food drops. Flora was confused. But didn't I see you on the farm the day I escaped my pen? Oscar raised his eyebrows. Oh, so that's why you look familiar. Yes, that was me. When I'm not leading a team, I train young dogs. Only this time you'll be pulling a sled, right? Yep. That one over there, Flora looked. Resting on a cement platform was a wooden sled with curved runners, sweeping diagonal frame pieces and a long, narrow bed for carrying a load. Flora imagined dogs pulling it over the snow. It looked nothing like the cart with wheels back on the farm. Wow, she breathed. Is it fast? Depends on the strength of the team. No wonder the men had grabbed her. They really did need a strong, fast pig. Flora waited for Oscar to say more, but he was silent. She tried to think of a question to get him talking again. Do you like being a sled dog? she asked. Well, that's like asking if a bird likes to fly. Being a sled dog is what I was born to do, said Oscar. You have to be willing to work hard and get cold and tired. You have to be just a little bit crazy, but at the end of the day, you know you got the pulling done and you earned your supper. There's no better job on earth. Flora was enchanted. She tried to imagine herself running ahead of the team while they were acting just a little bit crazy. When we get to the Antarctic, do you think you could show me a few things about being a sled dog? She blurted out. Before Flora could hear the answer, 
The other dogs burst out with great barking and snarling and even began digging and biting at their wire doors. Flora looked around, her heart pounding. What could be the matter? 